In this demo, I'm gonna be using Azure Blob Storage as our source and Azure Cosmos DB as our sync to perform a data movement activity in the form of a copy. Our data will be sitting in a JSON document that resides on the blob storage. In order to get started, we're gonna need a couple of things. So first off is a valid Azure subscription, an Azure Data Factory resource, specifically V2, an Azure storage account. Now I've selected general purpose V2, so I'd recommend picking the same, and a Cosmos DB account that's using the SQL API. Now, if we jump over to the Azure portal, you can see I have all three resources ready to go with Blob Storage and Cosmos sitting in the same UK South region. Data Factory is actually sitting in East US. The reason for that is, is that Data Factory at the moment is only available in a select few regions, I believe three at the po this point in time. Now, the reason that that doesn't matter too much from a data compliance or data efficiency perspective is that Data Factory does not actually persist or touch any of the data that's gonna be involved in our workflow. Data Factory is purely an orchestration data integration service. The data movement and any transformations is hand palmed off to a computational resource called Integration Runtime. Now by default, the IR that's selected by Data Factory is that that's closest to the region of the resources that we're working with, in this case, UK South. So we're going to have to set up our source being our blob storage with our data file. The document that I'm using is very simple. It's available on my blog if you want to download it. Otherwise, it's very easy to manually craft. And the data is actually Bitcoin price data at a point in time snapshot. We've got highs and lows and volumes. I've purposely chosen something that's very simple, avoiding any highly hierarchical structures, nested arrays and things of that nature so that we can just focus on the core fundamentals of Data Factory. To get the data document up into Blob Storage, I'm gonna be using Azure Storage Explorer. This is free to download. Um, it comes available for multiple operating systems. So let's jump right in. You can see that my account's already logged in and it's picked up my Cosmos DB and Blob Storage accounts. If you expand your blob storage down to blob containers, we're gonna create a brand new container called ADF. Within that container, we'll create a folder called input. And within input, we'll upload our file, which will be available on your local machine. We'll wait for that to upload. Complete. If we go back to our portal, we've now set up our source being the blob storage. We've got to configure our sync. So Cosmos DB, in my instance, it's a blank slate. Um, if we launch Data Explorer, you'll see that I don't actually have a database or a collection set up. So we'll create those now, Cosmos DB, Cosmos collection. It's a very simple exercise, so we'll leave it at fixed at 10 gig. And since it is so simple, we're gonna set it to the lowest IUs being 400. So we don't wanna chew up too many resources. You can see in our collection that if we navigate down to documents, we don't actually have any records loaded in our database yet. Okay, so let's now launch Data Factory. To get into visual tools, we click on this author and monitor button. And Azure Data Factory is gonna land us at the overview page. We've got quick links to the copy data wizard and creating a pipeline and tutorial videos. For the purposes of this exercise, we might, we'll just jump back a sec. If you do have multiple subscriptions, multiple data factories, you can toggle between those, but we've only got the one. So selecting the Azure Data Factory, it's put us into the author mode. If we click on the big plus button, you can see that we can create a pipeline, a data set, and launch the copy data wizard. We're gonna be using the pipeline approach, so we'll just click on that. And on the left-hand side, we've got all the activities that are available for, for us to drag and drop. Now, the one that I'm interested in is the copy activity. So you notice that the bottom half has just changed, and this is where we've got all our configurable properties. If I unfocus from the copy activity, it reverts back to the pipeline's properties. So we'll give the pipeline a name. Now we'll 
there is the option to have parameters um, using expressions, but we won't need that for the rest of this exercise for any of the elements. And output will show us our runs. So name is sufficient. We'll focus back on the copy activity. We'll give it a name. Leave all the rest of the settings in general as default. Set up our source. So our source is our blob storage. We don't have one at the moment set up, so we're gonna to have to create a new data set. You can see that there's a vast array of data stores available. We'll search for blob. We'll call this blob data set. Navigate a connection. So you can see that we've got a, a large number of properties that are configurable. And the reason for that is that out of all the data sets, there's about 65 that are currently supported by Data Factory. There's a subset of those that's included as um, at blob storage um, that is a first class supported citizen. And what that means is majority of the properties that are typically crafted manually using JSON syntax is visible via the user interface. So if we need to now tell Data Factory how to establish connectivity to our data set via a linked service. So we'll create a linked service and you can think of a linked service as like a connection string. So we'll call this blob linked service. Azure storage, we'll, the default IR, we wanna pick our subscription, which will detect our one and only blob storage account test our connection and click on finish. So now we have our data set linked with our link service. So the data factory knows how to establish connectivity to this resource. And now that we've established connectivity, if we click on browse, we can navigate down our container of ADF, our folder of input and a file of data.json. Compression type for this particular document is none. The format is JSON. The file pattern, in this case, it's not an array, it's just a set of objects. Now, if we had a complex document and we wanted to pull out a particular element that was nested, we can supply JSON path ex expressions to pull that out. But in this instance, we just want to grab what's at the root, so we'll leave that set to none. Clicking on pass should automatically derive all of our columns based on what's inside the document. So you can see we've got the column names auto-derived and the valid JSON path expressions to pull out the values for those columns. Which finally allows us to establish a schema. Now we're gonna pull in all our columns. So we've got everything there, everything's been ordered to take the string. As I mentioned earlier, where there are parameters, um, we're not gonna need to set those for this exercise and we're basically done with our blob data set. Now to go back to our pipeline, we've, you can see that we're on the second tab, we'll just navigate back, hand over the sync, and now we need to set up our sync data set being Cosmos DB. We'll give this a name, Cosmos data set. Similar for as, as it was for the blob storage, we're gonna to have to create a Cosmos linked service to establish connectivity. So Cosmos linked service, default IR, Cosmos DB, we'll select our account, pick our database, test, all good. Now in this instance, when we think of tables from a document DB perspective, we're actually talking about our collection. Now for, cause we're working with a document database, um, being schemaless, clicking import schema is gonna return nothing. Um, if this was a SQL environment and we had to connect it up to a SQL server or a SQL DB, back in our connection string, pointing it to an actual table um, data factory would have been able to infer a schema via, you know, via the columns that are available. 
Now, if we leave Cosmos DB as is and go back to our pipeline, the next step in the process is to map the source and the sinks columns. Um, at the moment, this will fail because our sync schema doesn't have any columns. So what we're going to need to do is create a schema that matches the columns that we need. So we need six, uh, sorry, nine columns. We'll set them all to string. just mirror what we have in our blob data set. So high last timestamp. Pid VM. Oh, what else can we have? Now that we've updated our Cosmos DB schema, if we go back and remap, it's all successful. So we've got nine out of nine columns mapped, one-to-one -one mapping, type order detected. And from this point, we're good to go. So we can validate, we can see that we've got our no errors in our pipeline. Now, as we've been adjusting and configuring all these values behind the scenes, Data Factory is actually generating all the necessary JSON syntax. We haven't had to write a line of code in order for, for that to be done. Um, so we'll just publish and save all our changes and once that comes back we'll perform a test run now at the I'm actually conscious that there is there seems to be an issue with leaving Cosmos DB left to the default integration runtime um, I'm still not too quite sure as to why that is um, it seems to be fine for the blob storage I've checked the documentation and by default, it should be picking the closest IR. Um, but you'll see that our initial run attempt fails. If we click on the error message, we can see that it failed to detect the region for the Cosmos DB link service. So nevertheless, we can explicitly tell um, Cosmos DB, if we go back to the link service, remember we had the option to pick an IR. So we create a new one that explicitly chooses an integration runtime that's sitting in UK South. So we're in the public network, UK South integration runtime. So you can see now that we've explicitly told the Cosmos DB link service to use the UK South IR. All of the settings should remain as they were before. Test the connection again. Should still be successful. Click finish. And if we go back to our pipeline and re-attempt to do another test run, This time we should have more luck. So you can see our job is ticking away. And we have success. So we can check on details on the input, the output. And the glasses icon will give us a visual summary of what's occurred. So we've got data that's been copied from blob storage to Cosmos DB. We can see the amount of bytes that have been read and written, um, details around duration, the number of DMUs that have been chewed up. And lastly, if we jump back to our portal, go back into Cosmos DB and launch the Data Explorer, We can see now that in our documents, we have a, a new document that's been populated and there's our Bitcoin price data. That's it.